Right, gearbox. LT95, which is down here somewhere. LT95 rebuild. Um, this is part six, I think. Uh, could be wrong. Look at the title of the YouTube video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the diff lock or the diff lock mechanism. So we've seen in the last video how the diff lock works by joining the front and the rear output shafts um, on the differential. Um, and in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about this fella. And this fella is a vacuum activated device. And all we've got on here is a fork which sits on that ring um, and then moves back and forth. Now, on this end of the device is the vacuum actuator. And this takes a vacuum from the engine via a switch which sits in the car by the gear stick. So when you pull the switch, all that then does is allow the vacuum to go from the engine down the line into that pipe on the end there, okay? And what happens then is, and I can do this with my mouth if I take off the um, the, the, the switch, the switch uh, that activates the light on the dashboard saying, or the light on the, the switch if it's an early car, that tells you that the diff lock is activated, is actually a mechanical switch that will only work, I can't really get that to focus, I don't think, only work if the plunger pushes the switch and closes the circuit. So. The light will not come on if the diff lock has not activated. That's a good refreshing thought. So if the light didn't come on, it ain't diff locked. Right, so what you basically do to test these things, similar to a uh, distributor when you're testing the vacuum advance on it, put your mouth over the pipe. <sighs> Run out of breath. You saw it move though, you saw the fork move. So the, the, the vacuum's working, so try it again. And I could do it with my mouth. There you go, so an engine, no problem at all. The amount of vacuum in an engine inlet manifold is, uh, is significant. And you notice as soon as I let the vacuum go, um, then the diff lock disengages. Uh, I just thought of quite a neat way I can demonstrate how this um, actuator works. Um, so when it, plunges in and out, it moves, wow. What's that gonna be, about two centimeters? Let's go for metric, two centimeters, maybe maybe up to an inch, it's not, not quite an inch. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll put the fork loosely on its ring, for now, um, which it is now. So we put it in place, we've got it in the normal position, there's no vacuum, so therefore, there'll be no diff lock. Now, if I wind the back axle, off, don't need it. The front isn't moving, okay? I'm in neutral on the transfer box. All I'm doing is looking at the um, looking at the, the function of the diff lock. Now, if I move this forwards by as much as it needs to go, I might need to just wiggle. There we are, it's wiggled in. Right, so now it's engaged. Let's move forwards by about a centimeter and a half. Hold that in place now. And now I'm going to turn doesn't move forwards, there we are, it's moved forwards enough now, because it's moved forward about an inch now. Now when I turn the back one, you'll notice the front one turns in the same direction. Okay? So all I've done there, rather than using the vacuum on the fork, I've just moved the whole housing into the correct location. So now it will be disengaged, front's not moving when back is, and now it's engaged. So that's how, really how it works, but using a vacuum to move that fork back and forth. Cool, huh? And by the way, that's loose at the moment because I've not screwed it in yet. Um, I need to just double check um, the continuity on it, uh, but also I couldn't suck on this device when, that, when it was pushing that ball in as well. So next thing I think is to put the gasket on this thing and mustn't forget the ball and spring. <laughs> 